you don't fight it, it's fine if it comes. Here's a thought. There's your life situation. When you start thinking, you remember your past or your situation in life, circumstances. But underneath all that is your consciousness. It comes out of that. As in this little poem I read, there's the river of your story, good or bad, and you can step out of the river. It's still there, it's not going anywhere. If you choose to have your eyes open, you can notice how amazing and wonderful it is to be able to perceive this room, whatever is in it, without imposing any interpretation on it, just as an aware presence. You can take in the, the totality of this room. Be aware of it and my voice, it's another perception. And at the same time, be aware of yourself, not as the, not the story self, but at the same time as you perceive this room with your senses, you hear, you see, you perhaps sense with, externally with your body. You're also aware of the inner body, perhaps at the same time. And underneath it all, that which makes it possible is you as the awareness. That is what the early 20th century spiritual teacher Gurdjieff called self-remembrance. And that is what the letter E refer to at the Temple of Apollo in Delphi. You are and you know that you are to be at the same time as you perceive the world.
You can sense your presence. It's not yours, but we just call it yours. It's the presence. The presence in you is this presence in me. It's not two presences. But temporarily, let's call it your presence as a pointer. So you perceive this room, perceive this man sitting on a chair talking, the lights, you hear the sounds, the voice, some other background sounds. You sense your body, both the external body, your skin and the inner energy in the body. This all makes up the present moment. The now. But that's not the essence of the now. That's the surface of the now. Whatever you perceive is the surface of the now. It changes. Right now it seems to be static for a little while. We're sitting here. And then we move and it changes. The now is not what happens. Because that changes all the time, so there's only one now. People think there are different, different moments, so many moments every day, every hour, because things happen, different things happen all the time. And they think each happening is a moment. But the now is not what happens. It's the space in which it happens. Never changes. And you are it. And that's the heart of the universe, which is in you. You are it. That space. You are the now. You can just sense that, sense yourself as the space for it all. Then the personality becomes less important. It's a character in the story. That's okay. You have compassion with the character, you can like the character. Be gentle with it. Don't beat him or her up. Say you are not good enough yet. The more you are rooted in that which is deeper than the character in your story, the name and so on, the story, the history of you. That is the greatest thing you can do to improve the character. The character becomes more sane, more peaceful. There may still be little bits of insanity surfacing, now and then, that's okay. Otherwise, the story would become boring. But on the whole, the character of you becomes a more loving and peaceful, compassionate, and even in whatever activity the character pursues, more effective. There's more intelligence that flows into the actions of that character. And that intelligence flows from that underlying presence in which your identity rests. That is your identity now, no longer the character. That's a relief. Oh. Because otherwise that character can be so obnoxious.
God. Troublemaker. Either for yourself or for others. Usually both. I'm inspired to read one more poem to you. The title, A Moment Without Thought. A moment without thought and the background noise ceases, and I can suddenly hear the silence between sounds, the silence beneath sound from which all sounds emerge like waves from the sea. A moment without thought and the fog disperses, and the world is filled with translucent light new dimensions of detail and sharpness and color and depth. A moment without thought, and these suburban streets are a pristine new world like a garden glistening with dew the morning after creation, as if a husk of familiarity has cracked and fallen away, leaving naked Primal isness. A moment without thought, and I'm no longer standing separate, no longer an island, but part of the sea, no longer a static center, but part of the flowing stream. A moment without thought, and the train has stopped between stations and there was never any motion, never any track. A moment like a wormhole, infinitely expanding, like stepping through a narrow gate to find an endless open plain, the panorama of the present. And this new world of no thought is neither alien nor unfamiliar, but a place where benevolence blows through the air, and soft shimmering energy fills every space, and the sunlight is the translucent white light of spirit, the deepest, closest, warmest place, the ground where I am rooted. This ability to look at things or listen to things or with other senses, smell, taste, touch, as the awareness rather than the interpreting mind, practice that in your daily life. It's a primordial spiritual practice. If that's your only spiritual practice, it would be quite enough. So, innocent perception. It requires awareness. It requires 
an alertness in the background of your perception. Without the alertness, thinking will always overpower you. The alertness keeps thinking at bay. You remember the story I wrote about in the A New Earth? It's an ancient Zen story where the disciple and the Zen master are walking on a long journey through the mountains. And then they stop for a little picnic and then the disciple who is still having problems understanding what Zen is all about, he's only been there for 10 years, <laughs> he asks the master, uh, how, I don't quite get it yet. How do I enter Zen? Meaning, how do I enter the state of consciousness that is Zen? How do I? And the master looks at him and says, can you hear the sound of that mountain stream? And the disciples, no, I can't hear it. The master says, just see if you can listen, see if you can hear it. And that, this is the point of, of the master to the disciple to become more alert. He, the master associates the alertness with the auditory perception there. So the alertness flows into the auditory perception. And as the master tells him, you have to listen more carefully to hear that mountain stream. And then the disciple, at that moment, the alertness, the, the awareness in the disciple rises and he goes. And of course, at that very moment, while he's in that intense listening, He's no longer thinking or trying to figure out what Zen is all about. And then he can hear in the far distance is a tiny mountain stream that makes a sound. And suddenly he can hear it. And he says, yes, I can hear it. And the master says, that's it, enter Zen from there. Oh. This is a practical, to show by means of practical example what that means, that alertness. Jesus talks about it too. He says, if you be, so, be so awake as if you were, let's, he gives the parable of a servant waiting for the master. He doesn't know when the master comes. He may come in very silently. So you have, you have to be alert. Don't go to sleep. Be alert and wait for the master. So the, the servant is sitting in that house. The door maybe is, um, in my version of the story, the servant is on the upper floor. <laughs> and the master is going, could come in any moment. And he's fairly, the master is very quiet. So you go. So the servant basically would be in continuous presence. Otherwise he might miss the master. Again, it's an example to show what that state of consciousness is, again using the analogy with associating awareness with the auditory perception. You can associate it with other perceptions too, or with all perception or with no perception. And there's no stress or strain in that alertness. There isn't a willfulness behind it. That's not it. You can't hold your breath and make yourself be more alert. <laughs> I still can't hear the mountain stream. You have to. It's a, it's a relaxed alertness. That is one, if you, I'll sometimes use the expression vibrational frequency, and there is a truth behind it, whether or not it's scientific, I don't care, by the way. <laughs> um, 
I can sense when, because I also experience fluctuations, there's always an, a certain alertness in the background, but sometimes there's an increase in alertness and sometimes it's just, it recedes, it's in the background, the awareness. And then the awareness, the light gets a little like a dimmer switch, it goes pshh. And then it goes, it's still there. According to the situation, now the, the so-called enlightened state, which is the destiny of each human to reach, although many won't reach it in this lifetime, but <laughs> that's okay. That would mean there's a continuous background awareness, Indian continuous. And you, many of you already have it sporadically, and there may be some of you who already have it continuously in the background. And the only reason why you're here because it's enjoyable. But there's no point in asking, oh, when is it going to be continuous for me? Irrelevant question. The only true question is, is it there now? That's the only place where it can be now. It's not <laughs> Well, it's going to be there 10 minutes from now, who knows? Is it going to be there next week when I get home? Who knows? <laughs> but when you get home, it's now. So the only relevant question is, am I aware now? And if you even remember to ask that question, which is a powerful pointer to awareness, very easily you can step from the question, which is still a thought. I call it a pointer. Certain thoughts are pointers that point beyond thought. So that says, am I, am I aware now? It's a powerful pointer. And after that, you. Yes, that can immediately bring to in, bring you to that alert, heightened alertness. Am I la I'm aware now? Let me just check, and that checking creates a rise in the vibrational frequency. You can f you can feel that, and you can observe. You can, you can learn to observe in people. It's not judgmental. It's a simple fact. You can look at a person, and to some extent, you can see what degree of awareness is there. There are many humans who might never have heard of any spiritual teaching who have some awareness in their life. They don't know what it is, but it's there. I don't like to be stopped and recognized in the street all the time, but it does happen a lot. And when it happens, it's lovely. So it's a paradox. I try to <laughs> wear sometimes sunglasses and a baseball cap. <laughs> uh, a funny incident, I was in a supermarket uh, and I was wearing dark sunglasses <laughs> and a baseball cap and just looking at the shelves. And a man came up to me and said, Hi, Eckhart, may I shake your hands? Do people recognize you a lot? <laughs> now, I am saying this is not infrequently. I know a few seconds, I look at a person, a few seconds before they recognize me, I recognize them. I've never seen them before, but I recognize them. I know there is a there is that there's a fairly strong presence there, and then I know oh this person is going, and this is not a thought; it's just a realization. This person is going to recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the time, I'm right. Uh,
the opposite sometimes applies too. This person won't recognize me though, that's a relief. <laughs> but sometimes I'm wrong, not often. But you do, you can observe that there are people who carry a very heavy burden of, the, of their own personality. So that they, they are so burdened by this personality, that personality has such density that uh, this completely obscures the essence of that person. Not that it isn't there, it's there, but it's so obscured, it's just behind this dense layers of mental, emotional layers of years and years of resistance, self-generated suffering, unnecessary problem-making. And so you get this absent look and the burdens look. And sometimes it happens that these people too can awaken. In most cases it means they need a shock. Life sometimes does that to them. And that can, like it hits you.